Oh, hey everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the still untitled yet to be confirmed name for this Star Wars show that I'm going to be doing right now. We're going to talk about all the latest Star Wars news, some interesting stories, and review the latest comic, which is actually last week's comic, Pokemon issue 6. We're not reviewing this week's comic. This week released another issue of The Force Awakens comic adaption, which I'm not reading, so we're skipping that, and we'll talk about Poe Dameron from last week. Let's jump right into the first piece of news. Jetpack Stormtroopers in Rogue One? Well, if Reddit used the Toe Quark's theories to be believed, yes, we're getting Stormtroopers with jetpacks in Rogue One. He has this whole post up on Reddit, which I'm going to link down below in the description box. You can peruse at your own leisure, if you so please. But it basically boils down to this. There is these 12-inch figures coming out of Hasbro, which have jetpacks included with them. Now, we, shouldn't, we should point out that toys often come with stuff that isn't actually involved in the product that they're from. Be it Star Wars toys, be it like DC toys from the movies, be it Marvel toys from the movie. Toys often come with stuff that has nothing to do with the movie. But, sometimes, toys do point towards stuff that's going to be in movies that we haven't seen yet. The figure also reportedly says, head for the canyon, which leads the fear to being believed that they're on Jetta at this point. They're on Jetta in the trailer that we see where it's all dark and nighttime and at this desert outpost. Everyone's saying that the, the, the rest of the Stormtroopers figures that we've seen also have lights on their guns, which would make sense for this scene. This one doesn't have a light on his gun, but he does have a jetpack. But there is a theory, the, the thing that about toys not including... You know, they're making cuts. Okay, this one gets a jetpack, so we can't put a light on his gun as well because we keep costs down. The, getting into the whole nerdy side of toys thing, though. But, could jetpack stormtroopers make a, their first on-screen part in this part, uh, part in the trailer? Sure, I don't see why not. Now, history of jetpacks in canon. Yes, we have seen jetpacks in canon before. We've seen them in Poe Dameron comic where the First Order troopers used them to land on the planet. So, characters using jetpacks, especially like bad guy, F First Order, Stormtrooper, Clone Trooper related characters using jetpacks, yes, they've been used. They've also been used, most prominently though, in Star Wars Battlefront, which, when that game was coming out, Lucas, Lucasfilm, the whole Lucas group, they kept like trying to point, EA kept trying to point it, this game's canon, and everyone was like, what does that mean? And it was basically boiled down to them saying the events and stuff that happens in Battlefront is canon, but like each match you're playing obviously isn't canon match by match. So, which to me boiled down to this. The bare bones of Battlefront is canon. Everything that's in the game is canon. Each character that's in the game is canon. The events you transpire when you play the game is not canon. So, if we're going to look at that, Stormtroopers in that game use jetpacks. It's one of the first unlocks you get. It's one of the most used unlocks because flying around jetpacks is fun. But if we're going to go off that, Battlefront is canon. Stormtroopers use jetpacks. Are we going to see some Stormtroopers when jetpacks in Rogue One? I'm, I'm not going to lock it in. But I'm going to say if I had to pick. I'd say, yeah, there's a very high chance we still see Stormtroopers and Jetpacks. Now let's jump into Poe Dameron, issue 6 of the comic series. And since the last episode of the Star Wars uh, Untitled show, I've decided we're just going to dump in a big spoiler warning over this entire segment so I can just talk about comics freely. If you haven't read them yet, you can read it now. It what, takes 10 minutes. Uh, and if you, wait, if you don't care, then you don't care, whatever. So you can jump to the, this point. Which will skip past it, or we can continue here, and there'll be a thing across the screen. I don't know. This is how we're doing it? I hope that's okay. So we see the conclusion to the whole storyline where Poe has been trying to get more information to find Lawson Tucker, and he needs to save this hut. I can't remember hut's name. And we've got T-Rex down there, who in the last issue, uh, basically teamed up with all these old criminal underlord types that are down there, and he knows... Uh, seems real chummy like, so T-Rex is like a real go-getter kind of guy with the underworld type, somehow is now in the First Order. Um, I'm really liking T-Rex and I hope we get more history on him, but, so, what happens is, is really this whole issue is about BB-8 saving the day, part where he pisses off that other droid, 
kicks him off the edge, or whatever he does. It doesn't matter. BBH should win all droid related fights. But the big part of this issue, and the best part of this issue, was finally, so Poe, man they managed to escape. Poe, the uh, BB-8 does this, this whole thing, sets the gravity field off on the Earth, on the, well not Earth, the, the planet there, so everyone's being held down, no one can fight against this gravity field, uh, and basically Poe escapes because they're the only one that can walk, because stuff. But then the best part comes when Terex presses the little BBD button, Carrion and Spike shows up. Tarkin's ship that we have, um, if you've read the Tarkin novel, there's so much to do with his ship there, why it's called the Carrion and Spike. Why, the whole history about how that ship was basically built for Tarkin. Um, it was destroyed. It is now somehow like rebuilt and is now in Terex's hand in the First Order. Why, who, how, don't know. We'll get there eventually. I'm sure of it. I love how everything links up together. But the part... The best part in this comic is at the end there when Poe, and this is, this is the moment, if you want to know what kind of character Poe Dameron is, and I really love this moment, the kind of character Poe Dameron is. He's escaping, him and everyone else, they got the hut dude, they're going to get the information they need to find Law Sertaka. And then Terex in the Chaos Pike says, screw this, you know what I'm going to do? That whole old station up there that was in charge of the prison planet? Nah, destroy that. Because he's... I'll give it to him. He's pretty smart and he knew what he was doing. He, and as far as I know, well, at least in canon, we've never seen a ship do this and we don't know any ships that can do this, Canon Spike goes through that other ship, like just <laughs> through it, out the other end of it, in and out, really cool, explodes, so they're all stuffed, and then Poe hears it, you know... They're all being back there. Everyone else is like, let's just go, Poe. We've got what we need there. We, we, this is more important. Let's go. And Poe goes, no. They, I, know, I know they stuffed with us. I know they took money from that douche, Terex. Um, I know he's now double-crossed them. There's so much double-crossing going on. But you know what I'm going to do? Instead of just getting out of here with what I have, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to save the day. I'm going to save the day because I'm Poe Dameron and I do what's best for everyone. And I saved the day, because I'm a really nice man. A really, really nice man. And at the end of the issue, we get this cool moment where Captain Phasma shows up and basically like, Terex, you, you had one job, you failed, you, why? You POS. Um, and she's like, what are you going to do? And he's like, well, you know, shut up. I'm going to do what I need to do. Um, he's a really weird character that fits into the First Order. Considering most of the First Order characters that we've, we've seen thus far are very, like, by the book. Buy the book, buy the book, apart from like Kylo, but he's more of the, he's the only like force, Sifi type one there, so, but I'm talking about like in the general army regime type ones of it, they're all very buy the book, Terex, not buy the book, he's doing whatever the hell he wants, and it's great, um, but then, so we're setting up, so the series seemed like it was going to go very short, we seemed like it was going to just jump from point to point to point, and eventually the Poe Dameron series would obviously wrap up with him going to Jakku, and meeting Lord Santeca there and that's when the Force Awakens starts and it seemed like it was going to get there pretty fast because you couldn't string along this story for too long without it being silly but what they've done is they've made this part at the end where we're not looking we're not continuing on this 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 story to find Lord Santeca in the next part of the, the Poe Dameron comic story we're going off on a side mission where we're going to find out his new mission is to find out how Threx knew to be there who's leaking him this information and I actually don't have any clue Maybe there's some clues in the comics I didn't pick up personally, so if you've picked up any and you've been reading the Poe Dameron comics, you can let me know in, in the down below. I won't mind. You can tell me your theories about who or why or what's going on and how Trex is one step ahead of them at all corners and who is probably leaking this information from the Republic side of stuff, the Resistance side of stuff. Really great issue of the Poe Dameron comic. I'm going to give it a double thumbs up. Uh, I feel like this, this storyline had a couple weak issues there. I didn't really, I didn't really like the issue 5 that much. This issue was great. The part of the current spot was great. Loved it. Poe Dameron issue 6. And for our main topic this week, we're going to dive into Darth Maul rematch. Darth Maul versus Obi-Wan. Is it happening? 
Um, if you're hearing this and, you, and you're watching the movies or something like that and you're like, oh, Maul, he's dead. We'll get to that in a second. We'll quickly run over that. But I'll say this, ad, this part of the Star Wars Untitled episode show this week was inspired by an article over at Star Wars News Now. I'm going to leave a link to the article I read there where they talk about this and which inspired me to want to talk about it this week. So you can check that out for yourselves if you so wish. Okay, so most of the article was built around this uh, recent character descriptions that went up on Disney XD's website for Star Wars Rebels Season 3 stuff. And we got one from Mole, and it reads as follows. Now free from the dark depths of Malachor, Mole is running amok in the galaxy. Driven by a decade-long thirst for revenge that risks clouding his sanity, the ruthless former Sith Lord hopes to heal old wounds by completing a task he should have done years ago. So, what they're more or less hinting at is, uh, in the Clone Wars... Okay, so let's real quick back it up. If you've only seen the movies, and you're like, oh, Darth Maul dies in Episode 1. He gets cut in half, sure, okay? If, uh, in the, the Clone Wars animated series, they brought... Well, they didn't bring him back to life. They revealed that Maul never died. When he died for that hole, he came out the other side, and his pure hatred... His pure hatred kept him alive somehow. He got spider legs and eventually got saved by his brother and side through some kind of witchcraft magic. Uh, it sounds very silly when you say it out loud. You kind of need to watch those episodes for it to make more sense to you, but we're not here to, do, to catch you up on that. Go watch the Clone Wars episodes. Go watch, if you just want the ones with Darth Maul in it, and you can catch up, and then you can go watch Rebels Season 2, where, spoilers, but we're not, it's, it's okay, we're talking about Season 3 stuff now, so, you know, whatever, if, if you haven't watched it, too bad. Um, spoilers, uh, Maul shows up in Rebels, so Rebels Season 3 is going to have Maul in it quite heavily. And the big thing that happens in the Clone Wars storyline is that Maul has a chance to get revenge against Obi-Wan, the guy who cut him in half, the guy who basically... Ruined his life. He has a chance to get revenge. He has a chance to kill him. And he doesn't. He chooses to kill the woman that Obi-Wan loves. And she's dead. And spares Obi-Wan so he can feel the pain uh, that he had. Now, if you... The, now, so the, the Star Wars News Net article is basically saying that... The theory is that we're hinting at it here. By completing a task he should have done years ago. Which everyone's assuming could be... Most likely is to kill Obi-Wan. And the question is, can this happen? Should it happen? And will it happen in Rebels or will it happen in something else? Should it happen? Yes. It's a, it's a storyline that's been kind of stringing along for a while now in the Star Wars Expanded Universe, this Obi-Wan Maul storyline, and it needs to end. It needs to have a bookend on it at some point. At some point soon, especially if we're going to wrap up Rebels in a year or so, and we're kind of going to move out of this period of time in the Star Wars universe, predict, probably. We're probably going to move out of it, okay? So we need to wrap up some of these storylines we've got going on in this time period. Is it going to happen on Rebels? Yes. Is it going to be with my Obi-Wan? I do it's a question, like, because you've got Obi-Wan on Rebels. The only people who... You can't put him in a movie. As much as... I want an Obi-Wan spin-off movie as much as the next guy. In fact, I want it more than the Han Solo movie, and I want it more than the Boba Fett movie, I want it more than any of these other things. I really think that Ewan McGregor's at the perfect age, and I think it's, like, a great idea to do these to do an Obi-Wan movie. And I really feel like if it follows the kind of tone of some of the the two, three or four spin-off issues they've done uh, in the Star Wars comic where they had a single one-off issue here and there sporadically throughout the, the years now where they've shown an Obi-Wan story with him just sitting there and tattooing and doing nothing. But he's doing stuff. He's doing stuff. I know everyone likes to joke and most people that like to make this joke obviously the, uh, people who just watch the movies. They're like, well, he's just, he's just sitting there. He's not doing anything. How boring would it be? He's doing stuff. And you don't need to make it an action movie anyway because what a lot of what they deal with in the comics is the fact that Obi-Wan's a tortured guy. He's, uh, he's keeping this diary. He's, uh, he's living alone. He's, he's, he's having to, to deal with a lot, kind of like PTSD kind of issues. And that's really interesting. So can you have an Obi-Wan movie? Yes, I really want it. Can you have the Obi-Wan Darth Maul fight happen in the movie? 
I don't think you can. That's where I would personally want it to happen the most because you could get Ray Park come back to do the fight and you could... It would be amazing. It would be amazing to see him on, in a live action movie again. But I just think there's so much groundwork to be set in the movie universe. I, and obviously, everything in the Star Wars universe is connected amazingly. It's connected way... As much as everyone likes to talk up Marvel or the Marvel connected... You know, the movies all connect... But their TV universe is kind of over here. Is it connected? Isn't it connected? Is the Netflix stuff kind of connected? Uh, what's going on? The Star Wars universe is greatly connected. And if you're in the Star Wars universe, you love how everything's connected. But if you are an average movie-going guy who goes and watches the Star Wars movies that come in, you're like, I'll watch Force Awakens. I really like that. I'll go watch Rogue One. It's not Episode Eight, is it? No, it's not Episode Eight. I'll watch this other Star Wars movie. It'd be really hard to, like, here, sit down and watch this trailer for this Obi-Wan movie. Obi-Wan movie, that's all, oh, that's a cool idea. And then Darth Maul has a shot at the end, kind of similar to, like, a Vader shot at the end of that last Rogue One trailer. And, like, and then suddenly Darth Maul's there, and everyone out there's going, wait, that guy died, he got cut in half. How, I don't, there's no possible easy way for them to, for Lucasfilm to, 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 to catch everyone up, to force everyone to even catch up, to want to catch up on that kind of information, it's not going to happen. So Darth Maul will never. As I'm going to put. I would say he would never be in live action movie again. So Darth Maul's storyline, House of Finish and Rebels, is probably going to finish in this season. I feel like you can't drag, just having it for season three. Move on to the next thing. Uh, probably wrap up Maul's season uh, storyline in like even half a season here. We don't even need a full season of Maul. And is Obi-Wan going to be the one to do it? I don't think so. Because there's no possible way to get him to Tatooine. That makes sense. You can't have Maul be on Tatooine. You can't. There's, there's, um, in the Star Wars News Net article, they like to say, like, well, maybe he's there. Maybe you find out about Luke. And maybe your eyes off Luke is another one of his... Uh, another apprentice, but that's the way he's looking at Ezra in Rebels. He's looking at Ezra like, oh, this guy, he can help me. I can take advantage of him, which is what he did. So, is Obi-Wan and Darth Maul rematch going to happen? As much as I want it to, after going through it all, I'm going to say, no, it's never going to happen. I just don't see it happening. I can't see it happening. In my mind, I want it to happen, and I hope, by God, I am proven wrong, because it would be amazing. But if you have any theories about Darth Maul, what could be happening with Darth Maul, will it be a Darth Maul versus Obi-Wan Kenobi fight, and will it be happening this season on Rebels, you can leave a comment down below and tell me all about that. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for this week's episode of the Untitled Star Wars Show, done by VivaLadil.com, me, with me, VivaLadil, aka Dill, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Viva La Deal TV. You can go to www.vivaladeal.com for everything I do. Everything is in one great place. Everything from two YouTube channels, everything I write, it's all in one place. You can find it all there. It's great. It's amazing. What a great idea. Just put everything in one place so you can find it. Great idea. Don't forget, if you've got an idea for a name for this show, because I still can't think of one that I like, you can drop it down in the comments below. And you can drop down a comment below about anything else I've talked about this week. Or any other Star Wars related stuff you even might want to talk to me about. Or you can just tweet at me and talk about it. I'm always up for talking about Star Wars. Star Wars is great. Let's talk about Star Wars. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Anyway, until the next episode of the Star Wars Untitled Show. Or another one of my videos. I'll see you then.